welcome back to one of my favorite types of videos to film. I am filming every book I've read in the last three months. I think I started this this year. I think I've done three so far. So this is the last one for 2021. Four of these go up each year and I just think they're such exciting videos because I always just love to talk about the books I've read and I'm a big book nerd and I just love reading and I have a bunch of reading videos on my channel and I'm just rambling because I love reading. <laughs> now I will admit to you I did not read as much as I would have wanted to in these past three months. I read the least amount of books in these past few months than I have throughout the rest of the year. I just didn't read as much and that's okay. So this is October, November, and December. First book I read was Taken by D. Henderson. I have read a ton of D. Henderson books. I'm currently reading, well I just finished this last night, but I'm currently reading another D. Henderson series. This is a standalone book called Taken. D. Henderson is a Christian suspense novelist. That kind of sounds weird, I know, but Christian suspense is one of my absolute favorite genres to read. It's basically crime stories and crime novels that have a Christian spin to them. So there's no bad language, there's no bad topics, even though crime is a bad topic but it's not an inappropriate topic, there's always an aspect of the Lord in it, like leaning on Christ or praying and all, there's always a Christian aspect to the book and it's a good appropriate book. I still would only suggest this for probably 14 years old nut because the crimes are still sad. You don't want a young person to read a bunch, bunch about crime, but Christian suspense is a great genre to start with if you want to read crime novels but you don't want them to be inappropriate and this is all of the crime books I read is always Christian suspense just because when you venture out into other suspense novels there's typically bad language and bad topics this book was really interesting because it was about an investigator who was contacted by a girl who had been abducted and was a part of this crime family while she was telling him her story he was trying to investigate it and it was super interesting to see the character development as well really really good book and I love Dee Henderson she's a fantastic author now this is the really big book I read. This is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is some award-winning book. New York Times bestseller. It's large. This took me a very long time to read. Let me see how long it is. It's 564 pages, so it's very long. The print is not very large, but it's spaced out pretty well, so I can easily read it. I actually did a whole review video on this book and two other books. If you want to learn a little more about what I thought of this book, you could totally watch that past video. This was an interesting book. I'm glad I read it because I now know what the hype is about, but it was kind of disturbing. There were just parts of it that were really sad and I don't like to be, read books that are just really sad and depressing. Now, it really did have an interesting ending. I liked that there was a little hope at the end, but it's about World War II. It's about two sisters who have to go through the war and they have very different journeys throughout the war. One girl starts to be the rebel and she's against all of what the Nazis are doing and she's trying to help the other side. And then another lady is stuck at home with her child and she has soldiers living in her house. So she's dealing with that. Very crazy book. I would recommend it if you like history books. I'm not a big history book person so this was a little bit of a stretch for me. It was really sad so I just I wanted to warn you. Okay this book was horrible. <laughs> I do not recommend this book. This is Backwater by Joan Bauer. That's how I always say her name. I used to really like books that Joan Bauer write, wrote. She wrote Almost Home, Hope Was Here. She wrote some cupcake book that I really liked. I know I used to like her books a lot. This book however was not good. I don't know if this was one of her first or one of her last. There was just something about it that there was really no storyline. It was just about a girl who is trying to find information about her aunt and then she goes on an adventure to find her aunt. It's very weird. I do not like this. I do not suggest this. I do suggest other books that she has written, but not this one. All right, this next book was interesting. This is The Prophet by Frank Peretti. I have read another Frank Peretti book before. He is a Christian fiction author. This Present Darkness was really good and I want to read the next book after that called Piercing the Darkness. It's basically about the spiritual warfare going on. There's angels and demons in this town. That's what that book was about. This one was a, was a little different. It was about how one man's dad was a prophet and could foresee things in the future. When he passed away, it became John's, which is the man, it became his responsibility to do that. He was investigating a case about abortion. He was investigating two young ladies who had been through trauma Ma'am, did you say my name? I guess not. Anyway, he had learned about two different women who had had 
problems with a certain clinic. So he's in he's a news reporter and he does these news stories, but he is also a, like a prophet and foresees the future and I don't know. It was very strange. I really liked his other book and this one was okay, but it was really not even close to as good as this present darkness. So I would suggest you read this present darkness before, but his books are just kind of different. I don't know. Okay, this I read in one day. One, because it was a pretty easy read, and two, because it was really good. This is Lauren Elena's new book. I got this for Christmas. This is called Getting Good at Being You, and this is her biography, pretty much, but she's also talking about the Lord throughout this book, and she's encouraging girls to be yourself. Now, I typically do not like books like that. I don't like, you go be you, you do you, you're wonderful, and love yourself, and all that kind of stuff. I just don't like books that are just one quote after another. But this book, she actually did tell some stories throughout it, and each chapter is kind of about a book that she, about a song that she wrote. It's, the theme of that chapter is about that song. And I really thought it was interesting. I absolutely adore Lorna Lana. I love all of her music. Her voice is so good. This book was very well written. It was a very easy read. The print is large, and like I said, I read it in a day. It was, it was good. It's not very deep, though. Like, it's not super deep. It's just kind of superficial level, um, but she does talk about Christ. If you're not a Christian, it's still really good to read this because she's not badgering you about Jesus the whole time, but she does mention it a little bit throughout. And last but not least, I read Slammed by Colleen Hoover. I had heard about Colleen Hoover so much just through Instagram. People were recommending her books left and right. I was hesitant because I know that some of her topics are a little more adult than I would like and she has language in it. This was actually her first book she ever published. This is the first book that ever came out by Colleen Hoover and it is a series. This is book one. I think there's three books total. This is pretty much just a romance novel. <laughs> a girl and her family move into town and she meets the neighbor, you know, that classic story. And then boom, all of a sudden, it's not a classic story. Like there's this huge, crazy turn in their dynamic. I don't want to spoil it if you read the book, but let's just say that they're put into a position where they cannot be together. It's really shocking when you read that part in the book. I I would only recommend this for, I don't know, 18 and up. I'm 18 years old, so I, I wouldn't even read this before 18, possibly 17. There's just some adult topics in this. There's adult language. I do not plan on reading any more of her books. I do not plan on reading any more in this series either, just because some of the topics just made me a little uncomfortable. So I had to skip a few and skim things. I would not suggest this for anyone below 17 or 18, just because of the topics I just talked about and some language. I still think she's a really great author. How she told the story and with the character development and with how the story progressed and the climax. And it was just like crazy, all these twists and turns, even though it's a very simple romance novel. I thought it was really good how she wrote it, but I probably won't read many more of hers just because of content that she puts in there. But that was literally all I read. <laughs> I hope to read so much more this year. I'm not setting a goal for reading though. I just want that to be one of my things that I go to when I need a break rather than going to my phone or rather than, I don't know, doing something else, I need, would like to start reading more because reading just really does help me cope with things and feel calm and all that kind of stuff. I know it's kind of weird, but if you don't like reading, that's okay. I hope that you have something that you really do enjoy, but I absolutely adore reading and I just hope that maybe some of these books will stick out to you and maybe you'll want to try them or if you watch any of my other reading videos, then maybe you will find a book that you really enjoy. And I hope that you took something from this video. The Bible verse I want to talk about today is Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The book that we should be reading is the Bible. Now, I am, will be honest with you. I really have not been very good at reading my Bible. I have read other books before my Bible, and I know I need to get better at that. But this verse does remind me that the Bible is a lamp to our feet. It guides us through life and it is a light to our path. It is a way that we can communicate with the Lord and the Lord can communicate with us. No, he's not gonna audibly speak most of the time, but when we read his word, we can learn about him more and we can learn what he has in store for our lives. And it really does help guide us through life and give us peace and comfort. And that is something that I need to be reminded of and I hope it encourages you today. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and be a blessing to others today. Bye guys. <laughs>